Hi, my name is Jay Washburn. And I'm Joe Bandosky. And this is Start Writing. And this week we will be discussing lamping. It's a screenwriter term, um, but it definitely applies to uh, any kind of writing that you can do. And uh, we will discuss exactly what that means to shine a lamp on a problem. Hmm. Excellent. This week in critiques. Uh... Well, this is writing trip. Is that uh... yeah? That's fine. That's okay. We cover that right after this week in critiques. Yeah, we don't have anything for this week in critiques. Just writing trip. Okay, even yeah. better. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this isn't actually a book. I I did read a George Lucas biography recently, and that talked about his movie American Graffiti. So huh? I went back and watched that. If you don't know, it's about kids driving the strip back in '62. Just like kind of. Uh, a last night of high school, basically. Yeah. Um, so there's this one. There's there's not really a central protagonist, but one of the main kids. He sees this woman in a Thunderbird. This white Thunderbird rolls by, and she like looks at him, and I can't remember. If she like mouths, "I love you" or something. And the rest of the night, he's driving around this town looking for this I mysterious woman that. in the T-Bird. <laughs> And what I wanted to bring up, what I thought was a genius storytelling move, is a bit of a spoiler, but you should have watched it 30 years ago. <laughs> uh, so he gets in the plane after this like last night of high school, and he's headed to college. This is like the final shot of the movie. He looks out the airplane window, and you can see the highway down below, and the white Thunderbird that that woman was in is cruising along down the highway. That's like the last thing. He like looks out the window and sees it. Okay. And so... This theme, it's like a theme throughout the movie where he's, uh, he's like chasing this impossible ideal. Like he can never catch her, uh-huh. but he never stops wishing that he could, right? So that's a theme in the movie. And I just thought that last, uh, seeing her down there that one last time as the movie closes was a cool way to like reinforce that theme. And I just thought, for a writer, you need to think about what your themes are and you need to do stuff like that. Anyway, just like seeing that, seeing her again, seeing that car at the end of the movie, I was like, whoa, it just, it was powerful. Really? And it was like a, re- a reinforcement of the theme. I just thought, yeah, he's that's, still that's chasing genius. the impossible? Yeah. So there was no character arc there? Well, he, he's leaving for call. So there's like a blurb afterward that says, like, what are all the characters? Ended yeah. up, and his is like, well, he dodged the draft and he became a writer and he's working on like his first big novel. And I feel like you could almost think, you know, maybe he's going to write the next great Gatsby. And that <laughs> Thunderbird is like the green lamp post, right? Right. Like, there's that thing. So he leaves it, but it's like he didn't mentally leave it. I feel yeah. like that's what that final note was. Hmm. But anyway, I, I thought it was cool. Hmm. So, there you go. (laughs) Okay, so, lamping. Um, So, the basic idea here is if there is something that really stands out to the reader or the audience so much so that they they feel that it's a problem, then what you do is you basically highlight it as a way to say to the reader, I know, and I did it on purpose, it's okay, it's supposed to be like that, right? You shine a light on it and so they know that they are supposed to see it. So, the examples will make it a lot clearer. Okay. Right. Good. So I, I was reading uh, this this piece that the, this this author had written, and uh, it's it's a kind of a a, a sweet romance, and the the, 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 the first scene, <laughs> sweet romance is that like a different? <laughs> so so romance divides into a lot of subcategories. Okay. But as far as the steaminess of the novel goes, you've got sweet romance, which is very light. Oh. Then you've got romance, hmm. then you've got steamy romance, and then you have erotica. Huh. Right, so that's the spectrum okay. of sexuality that takes place. Oh, within yeah, the book. I didn't know that. So, so I thought it. you just liked it. <laughs> oh no, no, like, that's the genre. It's very specific. Yeah, it's a sweet romance. <laughs> and uh, so this is the, in the opening scene where the characters meet. He's going to the library to study, and he has this one spot where he likes to study, and. When he gets there, this girl is in his chair. And so he's trying to talk her out of it. And he tells her, it's my chair. And the first thing I said to her is I said, Sheldon Cooper is on the autistic spectrum or has Asperger's. He's a very famous character in a TV show that I think was number two for a very long time, if not number one. So he is 
known all over the world for this. And one of his big things is my spot, which is his place on the couch or the chair. When your character says my chair, I think Sheldon Cooper. So my first thought is he's on the spectrum or he's got Asperger's. If your character doesn't, you need to lamp that. You need to point mm. out to the audience being like, I know this is kind of like Sheldon and his chair <laughs> and he's at, got Asperger's, but I don't have Asperger's. I just really like that chair. Mm. Right. And so something like that immediately tells the, tells the audience be like, I know this is kind of like Big Bang and Sheldon, but my character does not have those kind of that disorder. He just really likes this chair, and I recognize there is a similarity. So you point out, be like, I know this is similar to that other story, and my character is either like that or not like that. But regardless, you've put the light on it and said, you could. See the, uh, so instead of the audience being like, that's kind of weird, that's like this, <laughs> instead you're saying, no, 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 I did that on purpose. I know what I'm doing, huh. right? So it puts that light on it, draws attention to it. Rather than them being like, what? And, and arguing with you. So the next example, maybe even make it more clear. Um, so this was a, brought up in, in uh, an author group. And so this book was written from the POV of a kid. And uh, in it, he would often make the st statement, me and John. And the beta readers were trying to correct this grammatically <laughs> every time. Be like, no, it's John and I. It's John and I. I was like, I did this on purpose because the point of view is a, is a kid and they often do it this way, me and whoever. Wait, and it kept coming up because you're not supposed to speak during your critique, right? So this was online. This was all fiction. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, the, so this, she was saying that all her beta readers were flagging it every time, saying <laughs> that she needed to fix the grammar uh -huh. and, you know, different things like this. And she was like, no, I did this on purpose. I was like, then you need to tell... The readers, you did it on purpose. And the very first time he says, me and John, someone needs to correct him and he needs to refuse correcting. Mm. So now every time he says, me and John, it no longer looks like a grammatical mistake. It looks like a stubborn protagonist who's refusing mm. to change despite the instruction. Right? You lamp it. You put the light on the problem and mm. say, it looks like a problem, but I did this on purpose. Yeah. Uh, and then the example uh, is, is from the Hulu television show, Future Man. So what happens Wait, is what's that about? So there's so they they the, so I, the summary of the plot real quick here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've never even heard of this. So the in the so there's this kid. He's just I, I guess he's in his early twenties, just a normal guy. He's a janitor, plays a lot of video games, but he's really good at video games. <laughs> so he beats this video game, and then two people come back from the future because they now believe he's oh. the he's Earth's greatest warrior. Because where they come from. Video games are training programs for soldiers. That's what video games are. So they designed this ultimately difficult game, sent it back in time to find Earth's greatest warrior. Wait, so there's like an old movie. Is it The Last Starfighter or something? So kind of like that. Yeah. 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 And so he multiple like plays the arcade. Yeah. And... Multiple times in the show, he's like, that's The Last Starfighter. He's always like, that's oh, the plot really? from this. Yeah. <laughs> because they've got to lamp it, right? Because uh -huh. just like you, it's like, <laughs> like anyone who read the screenplay is like, that's The Last Starfighter. Be like, read the next line. The guy's like, that's from The Last Starfighter. <laughs> and so then they Dude, go. That's and... genius. <laughs> so, so but they're lamping, right? <laughs> that's what they're doing. And and so then they tell him their plan is to find out when this doctor who creates this this uh, this, this vaccine that mutates is born. They're going to go back in time and kill him before he invents it. And he's like, that's the plot to Back to the Future too, <laughs> right? And so, like I said, it keeps coming up. And so what they do every time it comes up is they put the lamp on it. They say, yeah, yeah this is exactly like the plot from that other movie. We know we did it on purpose. Hmm. And they have the one character who points it out every time, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I got to check out the show. <laughs> so it's it's a little crass. Okay. So, okay. Just a warning going in. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, and so that's the basic idea behind lamping is when the readers or the audience are saying, wait a minute, before they hit the brakes and stop listening, you put your lamp on it and say, no, no, that's not a problem. That's a feature. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's cool. So that's the basic idea. We talked about this briefly way back at the beginning. We promised at one point we would do an episode... And there it is. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. we finally that's good. came back around and uh, and did it. And so one of the things to, to think about is 
when you're in your beta reader phase and a reader points this out, is the decision, do you change it or do you put the light on it? Do you lamp it? And so that's kind of going to ha- come down story to story. But, you know, it's, it's, whenever you, whenever you get, I, I would say a single, if you have like 20 beta readers and a single one points it out, you might not need to do anything about it. But if 10 or 15 of them are pointed out, then at that point you need to do something with that element of the story. You either need to change it or put the lamp on it so mm. that more readers aren't stumbling over that. Yeah, that me and John example, I've gotten feedback like that. And I actually didn't lamp it or change it because I feel like it mostly comes from people that are kind of hardcore into English and grammar. Mm. And they just kind of skip the fact that, well, this is a character speaking. Uh, anyway, I just feel like my I didn't thought really is that most readers it. are going to be a little more into grammar than other people, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. So. But I, I don't know. I just I guess I didn't feel like I needed to give my. So, like, my first novel, X Dot, is like a 12 year old kid. Mm-hmm. And he says kiddish stuff. So, like, uh, he says, like, Da Vinci's painting of God, which is uh, Michelangelo, Sistine mm-hmm. Chapel. And uh, I've had a lot of readers point out that's not the right. And I say, yeah. I know he's 12 years old, but I'm not going to lamp. I-, I feel like. I didn't feel like there was a purpose in saying, hey, remember, guys, that this fact right here is wrong, but it's okay that it's... Like, I just don't want to bother. It's just like, it's fine. And I, and I get like one in 10 readers, one in 20. I don't know. They're like, you know that? That's not who painted that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, and lamping is designed for that situation specifically. I, I think yeah. all you do is you give him a friend who corrects him. You're like, that was yeah. Michelangelo. And then re- the readers stop... Complaining yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> because true. it's like clearly the author knows mm-hmm. because one of the characters is right, just not the main character. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so yeah. that's, that's the whole, the whole idea behind the lamp is to remove these stumbling blocks for readers. In, in generating a POV, mm. sometimes readers don't recognize this is a POV development as opposed to an author issue. Right. I know the rules of grammar. I know Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel. And these can create stumbling blocks for readers. And so that's why you put a lamp on it. You're like, I did that on purpose. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So that that's kind of what it is. It's to, if you have a stumbling block, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to pull the element from the story. But it's a way to present it in a way that they'll be okay with it. Cool. So, so you have one, one last example of the Sanderson oh. thing. Yes. Okay. So this was this was a, an example of not lamping, but rather changing it. So Brandon Sanderson's uh, debut novel, Elantris. Uh, so when he was first uh, taking this to his group and getting his feedback during his critique groups and everything. They kept asking him, what does this story have to do with ancient Greece? Where are the demigods? He kept getting these questions over and over. And he was like, nothing. There's nothing to do with it. <laughs> and eventually, he was like, why is everybody asking me this? Why? Over and over. And then, because the original name of the novel was Adonis. And they said, because Adonis is the Greek god of beauty. And he's like, oh. So he changed the title <laughs> to Elantris. <laughs> <laughs> And so it was just an example of not lamping. He got the feedback, and instead of putting a lamp on it, he just said, it's just easier to just change the title. Yeah. So that everybody's not like, what does this have to do with ancient Greece? This is like (laughs) this whole other world. So, yeah. Huh, cool. That's great. It's it's an excellent concept. All right. Uh, thanks for listening. As always, we would love it if you would leave us uh, a rating on iTunes or whatever platform you listen to. Recommend us to our friends if you want to support us. Check out some of our books. Uh, I should have a new book coming out next month, which will mm. be my reader magnet. So that one will be 100% free. Excellent. Um, I'm excited to read it. So, well, you'll probably listen to it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, and... Uh, I guess, as always, thanks for listening. Yeah, so talk feel, to you next time. Feel free to email us if you have questions or want to recommend something to us. Hey, podcast listeners. Um, 
recently I've been thinking about how to uh, improve the the newsletter to make it more worthwhile to different people, and also been thinking about um, how much time I spend gathering keywords for Amazon and other advertising platforms. And I thought <clears throat> what we were going to try and do in the newsletter is we will send out uh, all the keywords that we've gathered for that month for our own purposes and just share those with you to make those available. And we may even spend uh, some extra time gathering them in genres that we're not writing in. So as it is right now, we have about 20,000 unique keywords. And um, this podcast will be going out on Friday, March second um but the the newsletter probably will not be come out until a little bit later this month just uh because i'm still trying to prep the website and everything for this so our, our expected release date there will be the seventh so when you get the the newsletter uh it should have a link where you can then access all of the keywords that we have collected in our own advertising pursuits and you can use them for your own and each month we'll just release the new ones um as as those who do a lot of keyword advertising you know you have to constantly be updating them with the new book releases and authors and hot new releases and etc so hopefully that'll make the the newsletter a little bit more worthwhile um and uh we would we would love any other suggestions uh for changes we can maybe make to that to make it uh more more worth your time so thanks for listening